have you ever felt? Welcome, fellow fly tires and people of Fly Fish Foods YouTube channel. Um, today we're going to tie a terrestrial pattern. That means something that lives in the terrestri. Uh, fly developed by a guy named Foamy Van Foamerface, a French guy. Uh, lots of rich history behind this fly. Not really. None of that's serious. Okay, this is a beetle pattern. Uh, it's made to kind of uh, have a, a sparse leg pattern. It's got foam. It's got a little bit of uh, indicating material on the top. And uh, today we're going to be tire tying on a fire hole hook. And as you can notice, it's not a dry fly hook. Uh, a lot of the foam flies that we tie are on a heavier hook so that the foam doesn't cause the fly to ride on its side. So this 609 is a great hook for, excuse me, for foam stuff. I got the burps. Curtis is making me drink uh, adult beverages here. When I say adult beverages, I mean Diet Pepsi. Okay, so I've just got um, UTC 70 in black and I'm going to dress the hook and I've been using these Renzetti scissors lately and I like them a lot very very sharp okay so the body on this or the I guess the pullover on the top is just two millimeter foam and you want to cut it roughly the width of the gap of the hook if it's a little bit off, that's fine, but I'd err on the side of it being thicker. So, just like that. And we'll tie it in right about here. We'll just wrap back. Just want to test what that's going to look like. I'm going to wrap a little bit further back. All right, so we've got that wound. Here's the unique part. We're gonna take some whiting hen hackle in black. Now this could be Hebert Minor, it could be uh, a bunch of other different types of feathers, it could be starling. But the reason I like this feather, as you'll see, it's very, very long, and I can get roughly four flies out of one feather. So I'm gonna take it and create a tie-in point just like this and I'm going to tie that so that the dull side is facing up so we'll tie that in just like that and it's going to lay right along that foam we'll get that trimmed off Okay, the body on this is just a, a good old peacock feather. Um, if you use the whole eye of the peacock, you can kind of gauge down here on the peacock. The fibers are a little bit thicker. Once they get to about here, they're really, really bushy, and then they get a little bit smaller as you get toward the eye. So I'm gonna grab some of those fibers up by the eye, the real super bushy ones. I'm gonna get about three of them. And I'm going to align them and trim the tips off just like that. And I'll tie them all in at the same time by the tip and wrap backward. Okay. Now, usually I'm going to counter wrap peacock, but because this is going to be covered up with foam, it, it stays pretty durable. But you can put like a monofilament counter wrap here or you can use Wapsi Z-Mint, which is super glue, and just put that on your thread so that it secures those in place. And you don't want too much on there. Okay, so I'm just gonna take all those and wrap them forward. Sorry, I'm all fingers right now. Two 
to about right there. So you see how nice that peacock lays down if you wrap them tip first. Okay, so there's our, our beetle body. Now I'm just going to take this feather and lay it over the top of that peacock. And I'm going to find the tie-in point here with my thread. And once you have one wrap of thread, you can kind of adjust that feather a little bit. Once I have that tied in like that, I'll just trim that off. All right, now I'm just going to pull that foam over the top, and you'll see what this foam does is it kind of pushes those legs downward as I tie it over, but just very subtle, and that, that kind of gives a very light impression of legs, which I think looks super cool, and that way you don't have to tie in like rubber legs or something more bulky. So I'll tie that in brush my legs down. You can see those wispy little legs. And now I'm going to tie in like a, a very sparse wing. Now this wing is more for the angler than it is the fish. So I'm going to use EP trigger point fibers in quicksilver color. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thread and before I tie this in, I'm going to use some wax. And the reason I'm going to wax my thread is because when I tie one wing in on one side and one on the other, the thread tends to slip off the front of these wings. But if you use wax, it won't do that. I'll just give it a light wax. Ooh, that sounds terrible. And that will help my thread grip quite a bit better. So I'll tie in one wing on this side at an angle and then I'm just going to pull this one over and I'll just catch the front of that little loop and that way my, my wings stay nice and split. So what I'll do is I'll trim those wings off a little bit longer than the body so we have a little split wing there. And then just for extra, extra, extra visibility. Was that three extras? Got to make sure I do three because it's in the rule book that when you tie this fly, you have to say three extras. Fly tying is a very formal thing. You have to follow the rules. Okay, so now I'm going to take this chartreuse EP trigger point fiber. And I'm going to take a chunk and I'm just going to tie that in right in the middle. Kind of right in the middle of where I tied those wings. So it's like a third wing. But I'm going to come in here and trim that just a little bit shorter than the wings. Just like that. Now the front of this fly. I'm just going to grab both the foam and the trigger point. And I'll trim them off like that so it's got a flat beetle fatty head. And then I'll whip finish it. And I should be able to whip finish under that foam. I'm going to have to get in here with my grubby fingers. So that's it. That's basically the bro staff beetle. Let me get it nice and pretty for you. But it's going to be visible. It'll sit down with that really dark beetle-ish profile with, with sparse legs. But uh, throw it at your favorite trout and you find the dumbest fish that you want to chase with this. Chances are they'll eat it. <laughs>